Okay. Our last discussion in module three, before we proceed to the last module that we are having, we are discussing urinary and bowel elimination. Okay, uh, let's define some terms so to make us to understand easily the other uh, other procedures. Okay, first is what is urination? Urination is also called as micturation and voiding. It means the process of emptying urine from the bladder. So in short, pag-ihi. Ano ang mga rules for normal urination? First, we need to practice medical asepsis. Okay, when we're assisting a nurse to change diaper or to assist our patient in urinary elimination, we should always practice medical asepsis. Okay, and in medical asepsis, you, it means you need to use clean gloves. When we're assisting, we're giving urinals, we are giving uh, bed, bed pads, uh, bed pan, so we need to use clean gloves. That is medical asepsis. Follow standard precaution and bloodborne pathogen standards, proper PPE you need to wear. Provide fluids as the nurse and care plan direct. Follow the person's voiding routines and habits. If you're, uh, some of the patients, they have habits in, in going to washroom for every morning. So we should always follow that. Okay, Even the pe person is hospitalized, we should follow that. Help the person to the bathroom when the request is made or provide a commode bedpan or urinal. The need to void may be urgent. Okay, hindi tayo natin pwedeng a postpone kung may kung naiihini siya or itatae. So, bigyan agad natin siya ng mga elimination devices so he or she can eliminate urinary or uh, bowel. Then, the, help the person assume a normal position for voiding if possible. If you're a woman, okay, sitting or squatting position and men stand. Then warm the bedpan or urinal. In other hospitals or most of the hospitals, they are cleaning it. They are using a machine. We are calling it as bedpan washer or urinal washer. So it will be uh, clean appropriately. Then cover the person for warmth and privacy. Provide for privacy always, okay? If elimination, napaka-particular mga patient natin dyan kasi uh, pwedeng ma-expose yung mga uh, private Part nila. So, we should always provide privacy. Tell the person that running water, flushing the toilet, or playing music can mask voiding sounds. Voiding with other clothes by embarrasses some people. Stay, stay nearby if the person is weak or unsteady. Bakit? Pwede silang matumba. So, yung mga ganitong person, kung uh, gusto nila, nakasarado yung pinto, sabihin mo sa kanila, wag nilang ilak yung pinto kasi anything na may mangyari sa kanila, dapat accessible, mabilis ka makakapasok dun sa uh, banyo. Then stay the signal light and toilet tissue within the reach. Okay? Lahat ng mga uh, banyo sa hospital meron yung signal light. So if they finish elimination, they can just call you. Then allow enough time, do not rush the person. Allow enough time, don't rush the person. Promote relaxation. Some people like to read when they are eliminating. Run water in a sink if the person cannot start the stream, okay? According to study, if your patient, especially if have the difficulty urination, okay? Sabi nila, iran mo daw yung sink, open mo yung, yung gripo, and then iran mo lang yung water. And then, Psychologically, the person can uh, urinate when they hear the sound, when they hear the sound. Then, uh, provide perennial care as needed to prevent infection, assist with hand washing after voiding. Always encourage our patient to wash their hands after voiding and eliminating. Then, provide a wash basin soap, so any materials na kailangan nila sa pag urinate. Then, assist the person to the bathroom or offer the bed pad, urinal, or commode at regular times. Some people are embarrassed and are too weak to ask for help. 
So we have different terms in elimination problems. We have dysuria, hematuria, nocturia, oliguria, polyuria, urinary frequency, urinary incontinence, urinary retention, and urinary urgency. When you're talking about dysuria, okay, dysuria is, di means difficulty. So it means painful or difficult urination. We're talking about hematuria. Hema means blood. Okay, urea means urine. So there's a blood in the urine. So it, this is the one. When we're talking about nocturia, okay, nocturia is uh, you're always urinating during the night. So this is the one, frequent urination at night. Oliguria means scant amount of urine or less than 500 ml in 24 hours. So each hour you should, if you're having urinary catheter each hour, you should have 30 ml of urine. Okay, so each eight hour shift, you should have eight, uh, eight hours, eight times 30, you should have 240. So it means 240 for the whole 24 hours, a 240 times, uh, 240 times three, it should be 720. So kung less than 500 siya, masyadong mababa. So ang tawag dyan ay oliguria. Pag sinabi mo namang polyuria, poly means many, so you're always uh, urinating. Voiding at frequent inter uh, large amounts. So it means abnormally large amounts of urine. So ito yung makikita natin sa mga patient na diabetic, polyuric. Urinary frequency, okay, urinary frequency is what? Urinary frequency is voiding at frequent intervals, frequency, voiding in frequent intervals. When we're talking about urinary incontinence, you have a loss or involuntary loss or leakage of urine. Yan yung mga nangyayari sa matatanda dahil matanda na sila, yung muscles nila or sphincters nila na nag uh, na nagko-control sa urine is hindi na masyadong okay or masyado na siyang loose. Okay? Kaya nagkakaroon sila ng leakage of urine. So, ang tawag doon ay urinary incontinence. Pag sinabi naman nating urinary retention, urinary retention naman is nagre-retain yung urine sa, sa bladder mo. Hindi ka makaihi. Pwede nag-receive ka ng spinal anesthesia. Okay, side effect yan ng spinal anesthesia. Or may problema ka sa pag-ihi, like block yung urinary passages mo. So, pwede ka magkaroon ng urinary retention. So, ang tawag doon is inability to void. Sinabi mo namang urinary urgency, okay, the need to void at once. Urinary elimination, okay, in the hospital, we, we, we need to be familiarized, we need to familiarize ourselves to catheters, catheterization, and what are the uh, guidelines in dealing or uh, handling patients with catheters. Catheters are tube used to drain or inject fluid through a body opening, okay? Then inserted through a urethra, Okay, kung saan yung ihi into the bladder to drain the urine. We are using catheters if we want to uh, measure accurately the urine output of the patient. Okay, or the patient uh, has inability to urinate by himself. So, catheters are used to, we can also use catheters to collect sterile urine specimens. Kasi, Pag ang tao ay umihi at na, uh, kinolekta mo siya, galing na yun, dumaan na yun sa marumi, sa urethra. So para maging steril, naglalagay sila ng straight catheter para mag-collect ng urine, para steril from the bladder. Then, you can measure the amount of urine. So we have different types of catheter. We have the straight, we have the indwelling, and we have the supra, pubic.
straight it means a catheter is straight we are using it just to remove or drain urine from the bladder okay if your patient is having difficulty okay like he received spinal anesthesia. Hindi siya makaihi. Sakit na sakit na yung puso niya dahil hindi niya mailabas yung ihi. So, naglalagay tayo ng straight catheter. Yung indwelling catheter, medyo mas matagal siya. Iniiwan natin siya sa... That's why it's retention. Tinatawag siyang retention or foley catheter. Iniiwan natin siya sa bladder just to measure the, measure the urine output of our patient or... Uh, Merong condition si patient na nagre-require ng catheter. Pag sinabi mo namang suprapubic catheter, okay, gumawa siya ng incision or ng opening sa pubis or sa, sa puson ng patient. Bakit? Kasi nasira yung uretra niya or yung, isbang, yung daanan ng ihi niya. Kaya kailangan direkta na siyang uh, kukuha or magdidrain ng, ng uh, urine from the bladder. So tingnan natin yung and we have also condom catheter. Condom catheter, ito yung mga external catheters. Hindi natin siya pinapasok sa urethra. So, nilalagay lang natin siya like a condom to just, uh, just put catheters in our patient. So, sa mga patient na may urinary incontinence, yun din natin mapipigilan para hindi tayo linis ng linis sa patient. Anong ginagawa nila? Especially sa, sa male. Sa male lang to. Nilalagyan nila ng condom catheter kasi hindi nyo mapigilan yung ihi niya. Okay? So, this is the straight catheter. Straight. We have the straight catheter. We have the indwelling catheter. We have the condom catheter. Okay? And we have the suprapubic. Ito, suprapubic, binubutasan yung sa puson or sa bladder ng patient para diretso na siya sa bladder. So, ano mga guidelines natin if we are caring patients with catheter? First, we need to uh, follow the medical asepsis, asepsis and standard precaution. We should always pre wear proper PPE in dealing with these patients. Allow urine to flow freely through the catheter. It should be, uh, the catheter, catheter should not have kinks, hindi nakabaluktot para tuloy-tuloy yung pagdaloy ng ihi. Keep the catheter connected to the drainage tubing then keep that drainage tubing below the bladder. It means, hindi siya pantay sa bladder. Dapat mababa. Bakit? Kasi pwedeng mag-backflow yung urine pabalik sa bladder and it will cause infection. Move the bag to the other side of the bed when the person is turned. So for example, tiniturn nyo si patient lateral or sideline position. Dapat sumusunod din yung catheter, katulad ng IV, cat, IV, IV bag. So kung nasan si, si patient, tiner kunyari sa left side siya, nandun din dapat yung catheter. Pag sa right side, nasa right side para hindi nahihilad, mag-cause ng trauma sa patient. Then attach the drainage bag to the bed frame, back of the chair, or lower part of the IV pole. So dapat mas mababa sa bladder. Do not let the drainage bag rest on the floor. Bakit? It will cause contamination. Coil the drainage tubing on the bed. Secure it to the bottom linen. Secure the catheter to the inner thigh or secure it to the man's abdomen. Kung si patient ay lalaki, sinisecure ang catheter niya sa abdomen. <coughs> Kung si patient me, ay babae, sinisecure siya sa inner thigh. Check for leaks. Kung nagli-leak na yung bags mo, dapat palitan mo na yan. Kasi pwede pumasok yung mga microorganisms na nagkukos ng UTI. Then provide catheter care according to the care plan. So tinuro ko na sa inyo paano ang catheter care should be daily, 4 to 6 inches after the urethra. Okay? Then provide perineal care daily or twice a day after bowel movements and when there is vaginal drainage. Empty the drainage bag at the end of the ship or as nurse directed. Okay? Dapat i-empty mo at 8 hour ship. Kunyari, 7 a.m. ka nag-start. Before mag-3 p.m., dapat nag-empty ka ng urinary bag. So, as nursing assistant, responsibilities mo yan. So, it, you should measure it and record the amount of urine. In measuring the amount of urine, you should always put it into a flat a flat surface para accurate yung and then 
uh, eye level para accurate yung uh, pag-measure mo. Use a separate measuring container for each person. Huwag mong gamitin yung measuring cup na ginamit mo kay room 1, gagamitin mo kay room 2. Dapat may kanya-kanya silang container. Do not let the drain on the drainage bag touch any surface. So, to prevent infection. Encourage fluid intake as directed by the nurse. Report complaints uh, to the nurse. Pag ang patient mo nag-complain ng pain, burning sensation, need to void or irritation, yung color niya is hindi clear, tapos cloudy siya, yung clarity, hindi siya clear, cloudy siya, hindi siya yellow color, may dugo, or masyadong, uh, masyadong cloudy, masyadong mabaho, okay? may blood sa urine, so i-report sa nurse. Then, observe for any signs of UTI, like fever, chills, flank pain, yung masakit yung, yung puson, yung likod, yung balakang. Change in the urine, blood, foul smell, particles, cloudiness, and oliguria. Change in mental or functional status, ibig sabihin, nagkakaroon na ng septic shock ang patient. Urine leakage around the catheter. Okay. So, urinary elimination, providing catheter care, I already Emptying urine drainage bag, removing an indwelling catheter, application of condom catheter in bladder training. So we should study, I should uh, tackle that during the resumption of our class. So next is bowel elimination. Bowel elimination, normal bowel elimination, we have the peristalsis. Okay, kanina, nasa urinary tayo, punta naman tayo ngayon sa bowel. Pag bowel elimination, peristalsis is the alternating contraction and relaxation of intestinal muscles. Is the alternating contraction and relaxation of intestinal muscles. So, uh, feces, ito yung dominyo, refers to the semi-solid mass of waste product in the colon. So, it is a waste product, so your body should remove it from your system. Defecation is the process of excreting feces from the rectum through the anus. Defecation is also called as bowel movement. Then stool refers to the excreted feces. So ano mga factors ang nakaka-apekto sa bowel elimination nyo? Privacy. May mga tao na hindi makadumi pag may maibang tao. So you should always provide privacy. Habits. May mga tao na always, every morning dumudumi sila. So don't break their habits. So always uh, uh, respect their habits and promote uh, dali nyo sila sa banyo pag gusto nila kung bayi sa habits nila. Diet. Kung ang patient mo ay puro mahinang uminom ng tubig, hindi kumakain ng mga green leaf, leafy vegetable, encourage mo siya to prevent constipation. Fluid. You should increase the amount of fluid so their bowel elimination will be smooth. Activity, they should always be mobilized. Kahit bedridden sila, dapat ginagalaw mo sila. Ginagalaw mo, tinuturn mo sila para ma-prevent yung constipation. Drugs, okay? Kung yung, may mga drugs na nagkukos ng constipation. Disability, okay, if they are bedridden, you should always mobilize them para ma-prevent yung mga difficulties sa bowel elimination. Then, aging, mas matanda ang patient, mas constipated. Or yung iba, hindi naman constipated, by may, but meron silang incontinence. Yung, na, yung nakakatai sila, hindi nila mapigilan. So, we have the uh, definition of terms. We have constipation, fecal impaction, diarrhea, fecal incontinence, and flatulence. So, let's match them to the uh, definition here on the right. So, constipation, anong dito yung constipation? So, constipation is, hmm, anong dito yun? It is a prolonged retention and build up of feces in the rectum. Fecal impaction is the, tumitigas masyado, is the passage of the hard, dry stool. Passage of the hard, dry stool. Diarrhea, ano naman yung diarrhea? Kabalik tara naman yung diarrhea. Diarrhea is the frequent passage of liquid stools. Fecal incontinence naman. Incontinence, hindi mo mapigilan ng pagtatay mo. So that is inability to control the passage of feces and gas.
and flatulence is excessive formation of gas or air in the stomach. Sorry, constipation is the passage of hard, dry stool while impaction, fecal impaction is prolonged retention and build up of feces in the rectum. So next is what are the problems we can we are facing in bowel elimination? We have the bowel training. Looking guys. So, bowel training done to gain control of bowel movements and to develop a regular pattern of elimination. Kasi sinabi mong bowel training, if your patient is having incontinence, then you want to train them, okay, na magkaroon ng normal na bowel elimination. We are doing bowel training. Inimas, ito yung ini-introduce sa fluid into the rectum and lower uh, into the rectum and lower colon. So, ito yung mga introduce nila. So, the patient can uh, excrete or eliminate all the uh, feces in the gastrointestinal tract. Anong purposes ng inimas? Ito nga, remove feces, relieve constipation, fecal impaction, or flatulence, to clean the bowel of feces before certain surgery. So, Pag ang patient mo, operahan sa chan, dapat linisin mo siya. So, kailangan mo siyang i-inima. Ang tawag din sa inima, kung baka ito alam nyo, uh, labatiba. So, meron tayong different types of inima. We have the tap water inima, we have the saline inima, soap suds inima, and we have the small volume inima. Okay? So, usually, ang ginagamit na lang ngayon is yung small volume inima. So, uh, it's like instant na siya, gawa na siya, nilalagay na lang siya sa puwet. Okay, nakalagay siya sa isang uh, bottle and then ilalagay mo lang siya. So, later on, altuturo ko siya yun. So, ito yung mga old style na inima na ginagamit dati and ito yung ginagamit na ngayon, clit inima. So, meron din tayong nilalagay pag meron patient mo, merong mga constipation, fecal impaction, and then nagbabawal training ka. We are putting rectal suppository. So, isa siyang gamot, cone-shaped solid drug that is inserted into the body opening. So, pag in-insert mo yan, dapat i-moisten mo muna siya ng lubricating jelly kasi masakit siya. Then, you should you should lie your patient uh, left side and then bend the right knee. Okay, it's like Sims position or lateral position na modified. Okay, and then ikip mo siya doon five minutes. So, pag nag inima ka din, dapat ang position mo, ang position ni patient mo ay nasa left, left side. Bakit? Kasi yung anatomy ng chan mo or ng intestines mo, okay, mas, ma mas mabilis malalagay yung inima pag naka-left side ka. 
we are caring also patients na may ostomies or yung mga patient na may cancer na hindi na nila pwedeng gamitin yung stomach nila or yung intestines nila. That's why the doctor is creating an ostomy. Okay? Para dun sila tumae. Or meron silang mga rectal cancer na hindi nila kay, kayang gamitin yung puwet nila para makatae. Kaya nagkikreate sila ng opening sa mismong chan. So, ostomy is surgically created opening for elimination of body waste. Stoma is an opening. Colostomy is an opening to your colon. And then, ileostomy is an opening to your ileum, part of your small intestine. Okay? So, pag sinabi mo, ito ang normal colon. So, ayan, nilalabas nila yung part ng stomach or ng intestine mo para dun dun ilalabas siya then magkakaroon ka na dun katatay so caring for ileostomy ostomy pouch has an adhesive backing that is applied to the skin have a drain at the bottom that closes with a clip clamp or wire closure it usually change every 3 to 7 days and when it leaks has an excessive backing so yun yung ostomy yun yung parang bag yun yung bag na nilalagay sa sa ostomy mo para pag tumai ka is hindi maglilik or hindi mabaho. So, you should always change the ostomy pouch every 3 to 7 days or when it leaks. So, how we change ostomy pouches, I'll teach you how to do that. One uh, next topic is elimination equipment. We are using bedside commode, bedpan, and urinal. Bedside commode, we are using, it's like a toilet seat and removal collection bucket. It's like a chair with the opening. Okay, so the patient can eliminate uh, in the opening. Okay, bedpan is used for elimination when person is unable to get out of the bed. Usually, we're giving bedpan pag gusto tumain ng patient. Urinal, we are using it for a man. Uh, bedpan, we are using it for a female if they want to pass urine on the bed. While urinal, we are using it for a man if they want to pass urine on the bed. So this is commode, bedpan, and we have the urinal. What are the guidelines in assisting our patient for elimination? Always honor a person's request for assistance. Always provide privacy. If you leave the person alone, make sure you tell your, the patient to use the call light if he or she is finished. Make sure the toilet paper is within reach. Be sure to provide good perennial hygiene to prevent infection. Provide person with chance to wash his hands. Of course, kung nagugas siya ng puwet, dapat magugas siya ng kamay. Always wear gloves when assisting a person with elimination and when handling a bedpan, bedside commode bucket, or urinal. Before disposing of waste, observe the feces or urine for a mouth. Never place a bedpan or urinal on or over bed table. Wag mo ilagay yung urinal or bedpan sa taas ng table ng patient. Bakit? Doon kumakain yung patient. So, pwede magkaroon ng cross contamination. Then, if there are others in the room, result in elimination, use fresheners. Disinfect equipment used for elimination. In the hospitals, we are using bedpan washers with the soap. Okay, so it will be cleansed properly. Ways in collecting urine. Okay, as a nursing assistant, we are collecting urine specimens and stool specimens. So, routine urine specimen, okay, we are using a midstream or clean catch approach. So, anong sasabihin natin kay patient? Sabihin natin, kay patient, magugas siya ng water without soap. Okay, magugas siya. Then, sabihin mo sa kanya, umingi siya ng konti. Then, Pigel, yung kalagit na ang ihi niya, yun yung kukolektahin niya. Okay? Then, yun yung isasabit mo for urinal disease or routine urine test. Okay? Para ma-prevent yung contamination ng specimen. Liting ko, anong sasabihin mo sa patient pag nagki-clean catch ka or midstream, sabihin mo sa kanya, umihi ka ng konti, itapon, then, yung pang pigel, and then yung kalagit na ang yun yung i i uh, ko kolektahin mo. We have 24 hour urine specimen if we are uh, monitoring 
yung urine ng patient. For example, meron siyang mga uh, sugar sa urine to monitor it. Okay? You are collecting it over 24 hours. To collect a 24-hour urine, have the person empty his bladder, discard the urine, and note the time. For the next 24 hours, each time the person voids, collect the urine and transfer it to the specimen. For example, pina-empty mo yung bladder ng patient mo at 2 p.m. After 2 p.m., yun yung kukolektahin mo. Then, mag end ka after 2 p.m. Then. Urinalysis is the examination of the urine under the microscope. So, that's all about elimination. Thank you.